Right, I ordered a DSO Nano uh, micro digital storage oscilloscope just to show what's uh, just uh, just showing what's in the box. It's uh, it's got this. It looks all greasy and slimy, but I think it's just a pull-off cover. As you can see, some assembly is required. A static bag, a little foam insert, cardboard. Share us with your ideas. Get free gift certificate. And then there's some uh, quick start. The quick start instructions. I don't think there's any soldering shown, but there's a little uh, ooh, a very nice soft pouch for it. Marked Seed Studio. Little probes. Lithium ion battery, alligator clips. This must be the back plate. There's a DSO Nano. Some 3M adhesive of some sort. And, uh, and the uh, instruction manual. So. What I'm going to do is I'll look at the instructions. Okay, I've zoomed in. This is the DSO Nano Quick Start. Okay, first, find the battery provided in the package. Connect into the body. Step one. Step two. Place the battery in place as shown in the picture. I can't read right. Find the double face tape and remove the extra part. Step three, stick the tape to the bottom side of the DSO Nano. Peel off the yellow paper to expose the glue. Place back plate on the glue, and you're done. Hooray. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. All right, I'm gonna do the assembly of the DSO Nano oscilloscope. First step, according to the DSO Nano instructions, which I will place here, is to find the battery provided in package and connect it into the body. So, I found it! I found it. And uh, I take it. And I will connect it. Okay. Looks like. Does it go this way? Yeah. Wait a minute. Make sure polarity is correct black to black, red to red. There we go. Alright, so. See, it shows it here, which shows it like this. Honestly, it does show it like that. Oh, it slides under the cover thing. Like that. It doesn't show it all crooked. Forcing it. I'm not forcing it. There. Ta-da. Well, it's, yeah, close enough. Yeah, it should sit flat. And step two: place the battery in places shown. Step three: find the double face tape and remove the extra part. Well, I guess they mean the extra part is the inside. So. Very careful. Oops. Looks like this is extra part here. Oh, there. Okay. I have the extra part of the double-sided tape, and it shows it shows it here stuck on. Well, they were taking that part around. Show the small part, so I guess I gotta do it like that. Ooh, sucks to me. So I'll put it on 
down gently just to make sure it's in the right position. And then I'll push it down a little more. There! Now, the next step, of course, is to peel off the yellow paper to expose, expose the glue. Well, this is fun. It might take me a little while. I'm picking away. Picking away. I'm going to get it. I'm going to win. Unfortunately, I'm peeling the uh, adhesive off before I peel the backing. Ah! Oh, almost. Alright. It's working. It's working. Don't give up. Don't give up. Maybe I should push this on a little harder to get stick more. Okay, it's a little goofed up here. It's really not that bad. Okay, it is that bad. Alright, take that back. I did it. I did it. So, there's adhesive here and of course the uh, this other stuff, or whatever it's called. So, and then the last piece of the puzzle is to apply the backing plate with the attractive laser engraving. I think it's laser engraving for the uh, seedstudios.com backing. Let's see. Now there seems to be a cooling hole over over here, so that's probably where it's supposed to go. See, does it matter? There's no orientation. Well, I guess it can't really go that wrong. Since it's just a back plate. Who's going to notice, anyway? And then I'll push it on and look at that. Now, there's an interesting question. How do you charge it? Well, I could look at the instruction manuals instruction manual. Yeah, but uh, I'm just going to look at the thing. There's a USB port, there's a micro SD card, there's a headphone jack, which is actually the jack to the probes, and lanyard loop, there's an on-off, there's a little mic hole. This is actually a repurposed MP3 player case. And um, I, I guess it, charge, it must charge the USB. Yeah, actually it does. I'm sure it. But it doesn't come with a USB cable. Fortunately, it's a very standard kind of USB cable connection. So I have like a ton of those around. Anyway, I'm not going to turn it. Well, maybe I should turn it on. Should I? Or should I charge it first? I don't really know. I, you know, I'll get back to you on that. Alright, I can't take it anymore. I'm just going to turn it on. I haven't charged it. Ooh, look at that! It turned on! Oh, and it shows this like really attractive... Yeah, actually the display is pretty nice. Of course it's kind of... It's not real bright in here. Now the battery is shown as three quarters full. So, hey, I guess I don't need to charge it. Well, I might charge it anyway. Because I'm going to go watch a television program with the kids. Alright, I'm going to turn it off. Right, this is going to be real quick. This is, uh... First time I've really run this. Basically, I just uh, turned it on, plugged it in, I charged it up a little while. And uh, let's just uh, have an Arduino running, flashing an LED, and I'm running that signal to the oscilloscope, the DSO Nano, and I'm just getting this, this trace. I have it in scan mode, um, I'm doing 0.5 volts per, you know, per division, height wise, and then, of course, this is the time scale which is at 0.1 seconds per division. And it's, you know, it's running pretty good. The screen looks good and, uh, you know, the trace is clear and looks like it makes sense compared to the blinking of the LED. So I'm pretty happy. So far, I'm pretty happy with this. Anyway, I'm just going to use it for uh, checking stuff out on, like, Arduinos and sensors that I'm using or, you know, that kind of thing. And um, it should work great for that. It's light, it's portable. Um, what more could I want? 